Serious, what's the creepiest, scariest thing that you've seen? But no one believes you. It was the night before my stepmom died. Lost her battle to cancer, I was 22. Was spending the night in bed with my nine-year-old half-brother. Cuddling him and telling him his mom was gonna be. Okay, it wasn't gonna hurt anymore. It's about 3 a.m. the time, and after a while he immediately sits upright in bed, smiles, says I promise to be a good boy. Mommy, I love you. Now my stepmom has been bedridden for the last month, so she's not moving anywhere, but I swear on my life. And my little brother agrees with me. For a split second I saw her standing in the doorway wearing her big giant fur coat, just smiling at us and just looking relieved. Brother went to sleep about two minutes later. I left to go into my dad and stepmom's room too. Check on her to see my dad awake and telling me she died about half an hour ago. I genuinely believe she stopped by on her way to the other side. To check in on her two kids and make sure we'd be okay without her before she left. When I was 16, I skipped school to stay home. And play video games. I set up my PlayStation. And made some hot pockets and right when I get good and comfortable, I hear footsteps. Walking to my room, I glance outside and see my parents aren't home yet but was still afraid I was going to get caught. Seeing no place to hide I froze. Suddenly the door was flung open and I heard a blood-curdling scream echo through the house. I must have sat there petrified in that room for half an hour before going outside and waiting for my parents to come home. I tried to explain to my friends later what happened. But they thought I was just pulling some bullshit from the internet was walking through the Rockies and managed to tear the muscle on the side of my foot so was hobbling back. I was on my own like a moron in the space of hobbling back to Jasper I saw a white bear. Think they are called spirit bears, just sitting watching me. Literally thought fuck, sake I'm gonna die here mauled by a bear. And no one knows where I am. But it just sat there and pawed the dirt in the direction of the town. I limped on keeping an eye on it and it just watched me. Then I swear to God no more than five minutes later a fucking wolf appears limping exactly on the same foot I'm limping on. Eyes me up and continues on its journey. I think I was even too pathetic to bother with is the moral of that story. I was petrified though either way. I was a missionary in South Africa. One of the creepiest things that happened to me was on New Year's Eve during that night. I woke up feeling really thirsty. I walked toward the refrigerator in the kitchen and as I was drinking water, I turned around and the front door was wide open. I could see the stars in the black sky and hear the faint sound of crickets in the distance, not thinking anything of it. I closed it and went back to bed. In the morning, my missionary companion woke up first and noticed the door was wide open. It was then that we realized we had been robbed throughout the night. And I still remember my heart dropping. As I realized the perpetrators were most likely in the dark house while I was in the kitchen. In the middle of the night, still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I know I'm late so this will probably get buried. My friend's grandma's house is, was right up against a cemetery. He always told me it was haunted and would see crazy stuff there. But I never believed him. One night, we were over her. How sand I swear. I saw something the size of a toddler run from the, the living room through the dining room man into the kitchen. When I looked at my friend he just went. Did you just see? That kid run through the fucking house. It looked more like a fast running shadow than an actual person. There was no one there. There were no kids around it was his grandma's house and we were the only ones over. It was late at night and no doors open or closed. When we told his grandma, she was just like oh don't worry about it. It happens all the time. After that, I started believing in ghosts. My friend also said when he used to sleep there, he used to push the spare room's TV away from him so it faced away from him. Because he would wake up at night and see people in the reflection staring back at him watching him sleeping, scared the shit out of him. I was maybe four or five. We lived in a somewhat questionable neighborhood at the time and looking. Out the window one night I swear I saw a neighbor from an app nearby with her son. He was on. One of those plastic trikes. I believe she ran inside to grab a jacket. In the three minutes she was gone. A vehicle pulled up and snatched the kid and took off. His mom came back and was looking for him. 
I tried to tell the adults in my app but no one believed me or the other kids with us. Still the scariest thing that haunts me to this day. I don't know what it was because I don't remember it. Because I was a baby, toddler, but my mom certainly does and mentions it occasionally. I was her first kid, and when I was born my parents live in a little old house in Scotland. Mum says that really quite often. Both I and the dog would stop whatever we were doing at the same time. And both look towards the stairs as if we were watching something either descend or ascend them. This is corroborated by my dad and a few of their friends. Who saw it happening, it's basically their friend group's weird inexplicable story. I just happened to be an unwitting part of it. Unfortunately I have no memory of this all and the dog in question died 30 years ago. So they'll never get their answer. It's not that people don't believe me. It's more that I hardly believe it myself. It was late probably. Between 1 and 3 a.m. and I was sitting at an intersection waiting for the light to go green. Across from me was a dark road with trees on either side and thick woods off to the left and houses off to the right. So I'm sitting there listening to music when I see something move at the edge of the woods to the left. Now this is rural New Jersey so things moving in the woods are either bears or deer which aren't. Scary but deer will fuck your car up if run out in front of you. I turned my high beams on to see what it was but they didn't reach the woods. Then I saw more movement before the light turned green. I made my left turn and drove off but I couldn't see what it was. The next day I drive the same route on my way to work and when I get to that intersection there's cops and ambulance over at the edge of the woods where I saw the movement the night before. I asked a co-worker what happened and he said they had found dismembered body parts there. Early that morning. TL. Doctor. I either saw a murderer, a bear, or the Jersey Devil kill and dismember someone. It was over 10 years ago now, and a friend and I visited Japan. It was our first time there so we went with a tour company. However, after the tour ended we stayed an extra night in a hotel in Nice Daikebukuro. During the tour, the tour leader tell us stories of haunted hotels and other urban myths as you do over beers or when you're enjoying a late night onsen. One of the things he'd tell us was to be wary if you find a room where the head of the bed was positioned next to the window. So if you look up while lying in bed, you look out the window. He'd try to scare us by saying in those rooms, ghosts would come through the window at night and drag you out to your death. Back to the East Ikebukuro Hotel. We check in in the early evening and the first thing we notice is how small the room was. The second thing was they gave us a double bed instead of twin singles. The third, the bed head was right next to the window. We rationalized that the room was too small. Really to align the bed any other way and the tour leader was full of shit. To be honest we were more annoyed that we had to share a double bed no homo. We decide to just let it go since it was just for one night. So we went out for dinner before turning in for the night. That night I get woken up by a door slamming shut and I jolt up. There, sitting at the foot of the bed, is a woman in a blue kimono. She had long hair and from what could make out, her kimono had butterflies on it. I freak out, dive and bury my head under my pillow looking back. That was a useless move if anything bad were to happen. I remember thinking, is this real? How can I check without looking? In my genius I decided to shuffle, I foot down the bed thinking if I don't touch anything it's just my imagination, I didn't think about what I'd do if I did touch something. Little by little my foot moves down the bed when I notice that there is definitely a depression at the foot of the bed, someone thing was there. I retreat my foot, start to sweat and at this point just start repeatedly saying the Lord's Prayer till I must have fainted or fallen back asleep. I remember waking up at 6 the next morning, and my friend was already dressed and packed. I asked him if he saw or heard anything last night, and all he says is I don't want to talk about it. Let's check out. Myself. Why fan kids were driving near some cliffs near where we live. We stoked to take in the view and some photos. I lined the kids up with the cliff drop and ocean behind them and took some pics as they took a step back for me to get a better picture. They fell of the edge of the cliff. I woke up sweating and petrified. The nightmare felt so real. One of those that really stick with you. I went for a pee and checked in on all the kids. All fast asleep in bed, apart from mine. 
Youngest five-year-old daughter. She was on the floor. She had fallen out of bed but somehow was still sleeping. Next to her on the floor knocked over I assume when she fell was a bedside lamp. The bulb from the lamp had burnt, was singeing into the carpet, I think ready to burst into flames. Nice of your subconscious to wake you. Before the house went up in flames. Doe. Similar experience. When I was about five or six years old I shared a bunk bed with my brother. This bunk bed was an old wooden one that was extremely heavy but sturdy. I slept on the bottom bunk. I was taking an afternoon nap. And vividly remember having having a nightmare where I was running from something evil. And it kept hurling boulders and rocks at me trying to crush me. Finally, I look up and see a giant rock. Almost shaped like an anvil crashing down on top of me. I woke up in a cold sweat and quickly rolled out of bed. I didn't take more than three steps when the top bunk broke and crashed down on the side where my head had been. My sister saw something on several occasions throughout our lives. I never actually saw anything, only heard something extremely vividly. Basically, one night everything was happening like usual. My mom was out with her friends watching some game. And my dad was watching a movie with my sister and I it was a comedy. So we all went to bed laughing about it. I was lying in bed about half an hour after we were tucked in, reading a book. I heard somebody stomping down the hallway downstairs, and then full on sprinting up the stairs. I figured it was just my sister coming back from getting a drink or something, but I would have seen her leave her room because our doors are right beside each other, and the staircase is just around the corner. So then, I figured it was just my mom coming back home, and for some reason being extremely loud. The way my door is angled lets me see anybody who comes up the stairs, so I was watching and waiting as they seemed to be in quite a hurry. The footsteps were getting higher and higher up the stairs, but as soon as they got to the top, they completely stopped, there was nothing. My eyes were still totally fixed on the hallway. As I got up to check who it was, I turned the corner and there was nobody. I immediately got covered head to toe with goosebumps and tried to piece together what could have happened. Not even two seconds later I hear my sister screaming, and she comes bolting out of her room with complete terror on her face. Without hesitating we run into our dad's room, where he is. Already standing up and asking what's wrong, my sister points back to her room crying, and says, there's a man. My dad rushes into the hall, turns the light on, and then turns the light on in her room. He checks the closet and behind everything but doesn't find anything. Then he walks. Into my room man does the same, but still finds nothing. We spent the next 15 or so minutes holding his hand as he searched the rest of the house. Flicking every single light on, he calls my mom to see if she had been home. But she says she's still with her friends. I could even hear the loud bar atmosphere through the phone speaker. We all slept in my dad's room that night. Over the course of the next seven or so years, my sister had run out of her room crying about the same men in her room. She says he just stands there in the corner and watches her. She described him as a very tall man in a top hat and a trench coat, like a detective she said, everything completely black. It was a couple years after that that I stumble upon what's known as the top hat demon. Or the phantom hat man, it turns out it's an actual phenomenon. Every description and drawing is exactly what she described that day. My son has seen him several times. I didn't know it was a phenomenon until recently. He would wake up at night and see the man standing in a corner in his room, on top of his toe box, staring at him, wearing a dark cloak and a toffet. Sometimes the clock was covering his head. IRC. I know a friend who called this man in corner because he would always stand in the corner. She had a fucked home life. So she would sit and stare at him instead of getting her parents involved. A few years ago, my wife and I spent three months in Bermuda for work. Initially, we rented a large detached house whose owners were back in the States. There was one locked room on the top floor, presumably containing the owner's personal possessions. After a few nights, we both began to hear footsteps from upstairs. This was relatively easy to ignore as we put it down to rodents. Even though they sounded human, long footsteps and heavy. We had checked the locked door and there was never any sign of movement there. One night I was asleep when, in my dazed state, 
I imagine somebody right by my face shouting wake up, this was from my right side. My wife was sleeping to my left, immediately after I felt. Myself pulled down the bed, I awoke to find my legs hanging off the end of the bed and my right, cheek moist as if somebody had shouted at me from six inches. And their saliva had sprayed my face, I panicked. Woke up my wife and checked the room but there was nobody there. I checked. The rest of the house and all was quiet. I washed my face quite vigorously after though. We left the house soon after that night. And claimed the company flat as soon as it became available. Never had anything like that happen to me before or since. I've experienced a few creepy things. But most are usually explainable. However the clearest one I've had was a few years back. It wasn't even that creepy for me, so I kinda enjoy the idea of ghosts etc. I was just getting out of the shower in the evening. Must have been winter as it was dark. I live in a London suburb so, all the houses are extremely close and relatively narrow. But the walls are quite thick and I barely hear my neighbors, my house is also fairly old, my parents are downstairs with the front room door shut. Basically the upstairs is dead quiet, usually my mom puts the radio on in their bedroom but not this time. Anyway, I'm scrubbing my hair with a towel and I'm about to put it away in my parents' room. I open the door, walk into the pitch black room and suddenly hear a somewhat posh woman's voice say hello. It was as if I scared her. I stopped, staring into the dark and replied hello to nothing. The woman sounded nothing like my mom or any of my female neighbors, the radio was off, the double glazed. Quiet as hell windows were completely shut, I stood there for five minutes, waiting for any other sound but heard literally nothing else, but her voice was extremely clear and directional too. I could tell it came from the back left of the room by a wardrobe. I was staring right there as I walked in. I thought it was quite a nice experience. If it was actually a ghost, because she wasn't threatening at all. My mum reckoned she was one of the people from a large family who live there a century ago, and somehow me opening the door went back in time and scared the shit out of her, like I was her ghost, I feel bad if that's the case. I was working at a bakery on third shift 8pm to 4am. At the local orchard, the store closed at 8, but it wasn't unheard of for the owners to come in after closing, I had had been working there for about a week at this point. I was out stocking the shelves, so it was close to the end of our shift, so probably 3 a.m.-ish. I turned to take something off of the rack and there was a man standing by the cold case. He was late 40s, early 50s, bald, thin, average build wearing a red flannel shirt. Tucked into jeans, he said hello, how are you? I said hi, I'm doing well, how are you? He said, I'm fine, thank you. I put the bread on the shelf and turned to ask who he was, introduce myself, and he was gone. I was only turned for a few seconds so there's no way he could have. Left my line of sight without me seeing some part of him leaving, and I never heard any doors open or close to indicate that he left. Or went elsewhere in the store, I told my mom when I got home because I was like, what if someone broke in, do I want to work? At a place where people can just easily waltz in undetected, she asked me about it, I told her it was weird because he was just standing there, looking at a covered up cold case so he couldn't see what was actually in it. And he didn't seem like he was trying to steal anything, she told me it was probably just the owner. I met the owner a few days later. He was not the man that I saw there a few nights prior, it wasn't anyone that worked there. I had heard from co-workers that the owner was still working there. Because his son that was supposed to take over the business had died of cancer. That night after work I went home and look up the son's obituary online. And I shit you not. It was the guy I saw in the store. This reminds me so much of a story my mom told me a while back. She, my dad, and my sister were en route to a party mid-afternoon and they stopped at the local family-run pharmacy to pick up a prescription. My mom ran in by herself and noticed a sign on the window thanking people for their sympathy and support. And she remembers wondering who in the family died. It was incredibly busy in sight and she saw all three brothers working, two were behind. The pharmacy counter and the third, the guy she spoke to the most, was behind the furthest 
counter back, he looked up, made eye contact with my mom, then shrugged and smiled as if to say crazy busy Saturday, hot, and went back to his work. My mom got her script, then went back to the car and mentioned to my dad that someone in the family died, but couldn't have been any of the sons, brothers as all three were in the store. A couple weeks later she was on the phone with my aunt, who mentioned something about a fatal motorcycle accident that one of the pharmacy sons was in, the one that shrugged at my mom. When she ran in pre-party, my mom said something about how awful it was that it happened so soon after the other death in the family. And my aunt clarified that the pharmacist died three weeks prior, a week before my mom went into the pharmacy and saw him working behind the counter. 3.30 a.m. My buddy and I spent the night repoing cars. We pull up to the light in Manchester NJ of 527 and 70, going straight in the left turn lane. Getting on to 70 East, a blue, 97 to 98 Honda CRV. The person driving had no face, just blank. Like the green man from Always Sunny or Nofus from Dick Tracy, my buddy Ann and I both saw it. Nobody believed it. I've had scarier but this just happened to my brother and me. Two weeks ago. I wake up from my nap to my phone ringing. I answer it and my bro, no worried voice says can you come to the office. There is a naked dude outside messing with my car and pounding on the door. In my barely conscious state, I just laugh at him and say call the police if there is a real problem. Two minutes later I'm actually awake and think shit. He sounded legitimately worried. I grabbed a pepper spray and speed over to the office. The naked guy was gone by the time I got there. Fortunately, my brother had called the police but they never came. We checked out the car to see what the guy was doing to it. And all we found was help me written over and over again in oil. Edit. The police eventually called us back and just said we've been looking for that guy. We assumed that since they never actually showed up to the office they found him on the way. I was about four years old, visiting my great-grandmother in NJ. She made a bed for me that sleep on in the living room. I fell asleep easily. But at some point I woke up and saw my great-grandfather. He sat on the edge of my bed, smiled, patted my leg and got up. He put his jacket on and walked out the front door. He had been dead for longer than I had been alive and I had never met him. Adults the next morning all laughed at the silly kid with a big imagination. At grandma's request, I described exactly what he was wearing. Flannel shirt, suspenders, cocky, pants. Generic description of any grandpa for the last 100 years, everyone was still giggling at. My cute story. The when I got up to show her how he snatched his jacket from the hook by the door and slung it. On in one motion, I turned around smiling only to see her completely pale, faced with tears running down her cheeks. Everyone got really quiet, and we never talked about it again. She knew I had seen him. No one else's opinion matters. Edit. Quite quiet indeed. I'm returning from an extensive Reddit break to share this. In college I was hanging in a friend's room. When he said he and his roommate needed to go move their cars to different lots. 45 minute process. I decided to stay and watch some TV. A few minutes after they left I saw a DVD. In a clear case labeled Mausoleum. I remember watching the creepiest movie I'd seen to date. British. Rough sex scenes. Werewolves. Mental asylums. A soundtrack like a haunted calliope. Shifts in perspective and time periods present, the back in 1700s, shot entirely in black and white, grotesque human sacrifice scenes, horrific death scenes, actors speaking directly to the camera for long monologues, a scene of a serial killer explaining who his next victims would be, and why which really shook me, and repeated colored cutways to flowers blooming and wilting. Atop headstones, I shut off the movie before it was done. Caught up and realized it was daylight. Both my friend and his roommate had returned. I woke them up and they asked how I got inside. Said I hadn't been there when they returned. Didn't answer my cell. Went to take DVD out of the player and it was empty. They claimed they had never heard of. Seen it. I have spent decades trying to make sense of this. Have endured nightmares and occasional flashbacks. I have brought it up in therapy to no avail. Has anyone else seen? Heard of this, I presume indie movie or experience something like this. Was visiting my dad who's a nurse at a pretty busy hospital. 
I was sitting in one of the hallways when it became deathly silent which was strange. Out of nowhere a nurse pushing a cart came. Around the corner and started to approach my general direction. As he got closer I saw he was pushing a body that was compelledly concealed beneath a white sheet. Being curious I watched as he walked by. The nurse noticed me watching and quickened his pace. He got to the end of the hallway and opened the elevator that was there. As he got on ice where I heard the body beneath, the sheet let out a loud gasp and start to stir. Before I could react in any way the elevator doors started to close and the last thing I saw was the nurse looking at me smiling. The weirdest part was when I asked my dad about it. He just gave me a puzzled look and said that's not possible. Bodies were never transferred out in the open and they had a private elevator just for moving them. I still think about it to this day. Wondering what I possibly witnessed. I lived in an old house in a small town growing up. And there were quite a few strange things that happened while my family was there. The first thing I remember being creepy about that place. Is waking up in the middle of the night when I was six years old having to pee really bad. I climbed down from the top of the bunk bed. And turned to see an old man in a rocking chair sitting by the door. I tried to wake my sister up in the bottom bunk but she wouldn't wake up. And I remember her being almost like dead weight. I gathered up the courage to run by the man and out the door and fell asleep in the bathroom. With the light on and got in trouble with my mom in the morning. My dad also told us that he thought there was something wrong with the place because he kept hearing kids playing and laughing when he would get ready for work in the morning. He woke up around 4 a.m. for work and would leave at 530. He told my mom that he heard laughing around the corner of the kitchen in the hallway one morning and went to see if it was one of us kids. Once he turned to the hall he saw a glimpse of someone running around the far corner to the living room. He followed this kid running until he was back to the kitchen when he checked our rooms we were all sound asleep. My mom also said that she would sometimes see someone staring at her out of the corner of her eye if she was alone. Knowing all of this when we were older, we would try to scare our friends that came over. One day my friend brought her Furby this was the late 90s. And we were playing with it in the bedroom. It started acting weird, sounding fucked up like the batteries were draining. It shut off with its eyes closed and wouldn't respond anymore. I said to my friend that we had batteries downstairs we could get. As we were leaving the room with the Furby in hand it suddenly popped. Its eyes opened and said hee hee I tricked you and we just screamed and dropped it lol. Edit. That wasn't the only weird thing with a toe that happened. My mom always told people a story about a toe I had as a baby as well. It was one of those toes that talked when you pressed. Its hand and said things like I love you and let's be friends. One night I was sleeping and that toe kept going off and repeating I love you. I love you. My mom thought it was glitching and went to remove the batteries, but when she opened the back, there was nothing inside. She ended up throwing that toy in the garbage. There were a few other weird things that happened there. And I will always believe that house was incredibly haunted. Thank you very much for watching. In the comments below the video, write what is the creepiest thing you have seen. And don't forget to watch our other videos.